Hi, right, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of the Barracks Emperors. It's a card game set during the Time of Crisis, which is the Time of Crisis, but also is a reference to the game Time of Crisis, also from GMT Games, but this is not an expansion. You do not need that game to play this. This is a card game set during that period. It actually plays solo, because there's a built-in solo system. So let's dig in and see what you get inside. This is designed by Brad Johnson and Ray Farrell, by the way. So. Big thick box. I mean, excuse me, a big thick chipboard box. It's not a thick box, it's only a couple inches thick, actually. Ooh, dig in here. All right, so we start out with the rules of play on the GMT Great Matte Finish paper. And we are at a 16 page rule book. So that's not too bad at all. Um, the solo rules go, I mean, the rules go to about page seven. And then we have the two player rules, the three player rules, the four player partnership rules, variations on page 10. And the solo rules go from about 10 to 14. And then the examples of play. So usually we start off, we've got full color graphics. We've got the cards and square cards, which is kind of cool. Um, and then victory conditions, game setup. I'll set it up on the board. Sequence of play. A lot of good graphics in this. And you know, like explaining the rules as they go, which is good. It's not very dense. Uh, special abilities kind of gives you a highlight of certain cards and how you would use them and play them. And then we go to the two player rules. So that when you get to this, this is like the rules. And then here's the two player rules. So it says follow everything for a four player game with the following changes. Three player follow everything for a four player game with the following changes. Four player partnership rules follow the rules of the four player game except Eagle and Wreath factions have a single scoring area as do the Sword and Pillar factions. So each partnership is trying to maximize their score. And then we get to the variations, the learning games, shorter games, and then the solo rules. In the solo game you are attempting to remain Emperor while defending Rome excuse me, Roma, against the evading barbarians and fending off three rivals to your throne. Follow all the rules for a normal game with the following changes. Place the emperors as normal. I'm not going to read the whole thing. So you're playing basically the, uh, the normal, in this case when they say a normal game, I assume they mean a normal four-player game, with the following changes. And then go from there. And then the rules, and then example of play, solo selection, resolving emperors, victory check, and then an extended example of play, and then the credits, or excuse me, the index and the credits. So that's the rule book. Then we've got the game board. It's bigger than I thought it would be. It is a full eight panel map, or board, it's not really a map. And it is set vertically. Take a look, it's basically just a big grid of, of uh, squares to place cards on. There are some markers on them. I don't know if those gain you points or mean anything specific. And then, so we have the, uh, at the top here, we've got the emperors, barbarians, pretenders. Place six populous emperors here at game start. Right there. And then at the bottom here, you got the forum. Eight or less, six or less, four or less, two or less. You got your draw deck and discard. So it is a big map. There are going to be big cards that go under the cards. are going to be about the size. We'll see them in a second. Could have probably, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything. Could have been a little smaller, probably. But it's a good quality map. It's all mounted. So then we have one set of six counters. <laughs> We've got plus one, plus two, plus one, plus two, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus three, plus three. So that's it. It's a not a counter dense game, is it? And then we've got our decks of cards. So we have, let's see, we have an Emperor deck, an SPQR deck, and then we have, I assume, a Barbarian deck. 
Let's dig into them. Now, I don't know if they make sleeves that will work for these. So that is, because I've seen, you know, I've seen square cards that have, you know, that you can sleeve, and, and this may be a standard size. So we have reference cards here built into, you know, in, the, in the deck. And then we've got your Roma. This is where Roma goes. And the fortified Roma, instead of placing a Barbarian in Roma, flip this card over and discard the Barbarian. And then we've got, so this is going to be where the city gets placed and then you're battling for it. And then player turn reference cards, scoring reference cards. And then some more SPQR cards to go with that deck. And so let's just take a look at a few of them here. Barbarians, you must place this card in any homeland space or discard it to move any active bar barbarian to a diagonally adjacent connected space not containing a barbarian. So it almost seems conceptually, it seems like it's going to play like chess where there's a board and you're putting cards in position to, to maximize them. I, mean, I don't think the cards move, but I mean, it's just, you know, it's kind of a gridded structure and you're placing your characters or your uh, your armies and factions down, but that's just a guess. I haven't played it. Obviously, I haven't played it because I'm unboxing it as we speak. All right, so we have the Emperor deck, and we have more of the SPQR cards. Is there anything else? So these are all SPQRs. So. Influence peddling. You may add one counter to another Senate influence card already played anywhere on the board. Force March, you may play this card in the open space that is adjacent to the Emperor. These are good old GMT, good old thick quality. I mean, if you can shuffle little tiny small square decks, you'll be able to, to use these. It might be easier though if you can find sleeves for them. They are 70 millimeters square. If you're looking for sleeves, you would want to look for something about 70 millimeters square. So we have the SPQR deck, and then we have the Emperor deck. And these are your various Emperors that are going around. Waging War, Gordian III, Philip the Arab, Philip II, Pacantius, pa pa Silvanicus, goodness gracious, all these Emperors, these barracks Emperors. Ingenious, 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 dude. Musius Emilanius, supported by the rebellion of the Macriani and proclaimed himself emperor when they were defeated. His super was 261, his death was 261 or 262, defeated by Galenius, general in Egypt, captured and strangled in prison. Boy, you guys are rough. All right, so we've got those emperor cards. So if you are to pick up a copy of The Barracks Emperors, a card game set during the time of crisis from GMT Games, you're going to get the deck of Emperor cards. You're going to get a deck of SPQR cards. You're going to get the Rome location and four player reference cards. You're going to get one little tiny sheet of counters and they're pre-rounded too, so that's pretty good. You're going to get that large uh, four by eight, oh, excuse me, four, uh, eight panel uh, mounted game uh, game board. And you're gonna get the very small 16 page rule book. And that is everything that comes in. The Barracks Emperors from GMT Games. Designed by Brad Johnson and Ray Farrell. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you and bye bye.